Thank you. We'll now move on to the next item of business, and uh, I should just urge members uh, that the following statement from me is intentional, is not a reflection of the microphone difficulties we had earlier. I would ask members who wish to speak in this debate to press their request to speak buttons now, and I call on statements, sorry. <laughs> and I, no debate, please. Uh, and I would ask the Minister to speak to the statement. Thank you, Presiding Officer. It is a privilege and an honour to introduce Scotland's first British Sign Language BSL National Plan which I launched this morning at the Royal Conservatoire of Scotland. This is the UK's first and only BSL national plan, and it was particularly symbolic to meet with students of the UK's first and only degree in performing arts run in BSL. It provides yet another example of the forward-thinking, progressive approach we are taking to social policy in Scotland. This chamber debated the draft plan in April, and I'm delighted to be able to share the final plan. This has been shaped by over a thousand individuals and dozens of organisations who participated in the consultation online in BSL or English or through one of nearly a hundred events across the country. When we debated the draft plan and indeed when we unanimously passed the BSL Scotland Act back in 2015, the public gallery was full of BSL users as it is today. It's great to see so many of them here. In particular, I would like to welcome members of the BSL National Advisory Group, which we call the NAG, and to recognise their important role. The NAG is a collaboration of deaf and deaf-blind BSL users, which has worked alongside Scottish public bodies for the last 18 months to help shape Scotland's first BSL national plan. It has been a truly co-productive approach, and I want to thank the NAG for their dedication and support. Our long-term aim is ambitious, we want to make Scotland the best place in the world for people whose first or preferred language is BSL to live, work and visit. This means that deaf and deafblind BSL users will be fully involved in daily and public life in Scotland as active, healthy citizens and will be able to make informed choices about every aspect of their lives. The BSL National Plan sets out 10 long-term goals for BSL in Scotland, covering early years in education, training and work, health, mental health and well-being, transport, culture and the arts, justice and democracy. The legislation requires the plan to cover the next six years, but we are ambitious for change, and so the plan sets out 70 actions we will take in the next three years. In 2020, we will publish a progress report, and this will include a further set of actions we will deliver by 2023. Future plans, which we will publish every six years, will take us even closer to our 10 long-term goals. Presenting officer, I want to say something more about these goals and about some of the actions we will take by 2020. We recognize the absolutely critical importance of language in the early years. We will ensure that families and carers with a deaf or deafblind child are given information about BSL and deaf culture and will be offered support to learn to sign with their child. We will also increase the provision of information, advice and support services in BSL for deaf parents and carers of babies, children and young people from birth and throughout childhood and adolescence. In education, the Scottish Government's goal is that all children and young people reach their full potential at school and beyond. And the plan sets out more than a dozen actions we will take to ensure that this applies equally to children and young people who use BSL. The actions in the plan will improve the experience of pupils and students who use BSL, enable teachers to provide them with a better service, and encourage deaf parents to be more actively involved in their child's education. We also want more children to be able to learn BSL in schools, and my visit to Stonywood Primary School in Aberdeen over recess showed me just how much children enjoy learning BSL. We will work with the Scottish Qualifications Authority to develop new qualifications in BSL, which will make it a more attractive subject choice as part of the Scottish curriculum. 
When pupils approach the end of their school days, we will provide a wide range of information, advice and guidance in BSL to support their career and learning choices and the transition from school to college, university or the workplace. And when they move into the world of work, we want them to feel supported to develop the necessary skills to become and remain valued members of the Scottish workforce and to progress in their careers. Presiding officer, I would like to turn my attention briefly to the range of actions in the plan to improve the health and well-being of BSL users in Scotland. For example, we will increase the availability of relevant health information in BSL. This will include making sure that information on national health screening and immunisation programmes is routinely translated into BSL and is easy to access. We will also develop a learning resource for NHS staff to raise awareness of BSL and deaf culture. Presiding officer, there are 70 actions in the BSL national plan and I have only been able to mention some of them. There are also actions to improve access to information and services in transport, in culture, leisure, sport and the arts and in justice. There is also a range of actions on participation on democracy and public life. Uh, in particular, uh, I want to highlight our commitment to provide funding to enable deaf BSL users and people with disability related costs to put themselves forward for election to this parliament in 2021 through our new access to elected office fund. So perhaps by the time we are discussing Scotland's second BSL national plan in 2023, we will have an MSP who uses BSL. The BSL National Plan covers all national public bodies who are directly answerable to Scottish Ministers. This means that we've been able to take a strategic, coordinated approach at the national level. Other public bodies, including local authorities, regional NHS boards, colleges and universities, and the Scottish Parliament, will have to publish their own plans next year. We're keen to share our learning and to support public bodies to develop their own plans. And we will do this through a series of roadshows across Scotland and guidance which will be uploaded on our new BSL Scotland Act website. And over the next three years, we will offer public bodies practical support through the BSL Scotland Act Partnership, formerly known as the Deaf Sector Partnership. The partnership, which includes British Deaf Association, Deaf Action, Deaf Blind Scotland, National Deaf Children's Society and Scottish Council on Deafness, has been awarded funding of £1.3 million to continue their important work. I would like to take this opportunity to thank all of these organisations and others who work in the field of BSL for their contributions so far and for the work they will do in the months and years ahead to help make sure the BSL Scotland Act makes a difference to people across Scotland. Our approach to BSL has been warmly welcomed by the United Nations in Geneva and by our BSL communities and the organisations that represent them and by this chamber. I hope that today's statement will also gain the crucial cross-party support that the BSL legislation enjoyed so that we can work together across political parties, across Scotland and with deaf and deafblind BSL users to promote and support BSL and all those who use it. Presiding officer, I commend the BSL national plan to the chamber and look forward to taking questions from members. Thank you. We have a, around 20 minutes for questions. I would urge those who wish to ask a question to press their request to speak button now. And I call on Liz Smith. Uh, thank you. And can I thank the Minister for prior sight of both the BSL plan and his statement. And can I warmly congratulate the Scottish Government uh, and all those who've made such significant progress to ensure that all those people who are deaf and who have hearing impairment are very much better served, both in terms of education and all the public bodies uh, which they come into contact with. That is very good news indeed. As the Minister himself, himself acknowledges, these changes are substantial and will continue well into the future. So could I ask the Minister three things? Firstly, what estimate has the Scottish Government made of the numbers of specialist staff who will be required across Scotland to implement these changes? Secondly, what efforts have been made to provide an accurate estimate of the ongoing costs of training these staff? And thirdly, in light of some of the evidence that was originally presented to the Education Committee, when young people expressed concerns about the experiences that they had encountered at colleges and universities, may, may I ask whether the action referred to in the BSL plan will mean that 
changes will become part of the outcome agreements for FE and HE institutions or whether the Scottish Funding Council will provide separate guidelines? Minister. Okay. Uh, in terms of Liz Smith's initial question around the uh, relevant numbers, um, what we have attempted to do with the plan is not to put fixed numbers within the plan um, because we recognise that there will be varying needs depending on the different sectors uh, across Scotland. We already accept and understand that there are variations in terms of interpretation services uh, from within the, the pool of interpreters which are already there. But what I can say is that we will be ensuring uh, that courses are available and that capacity is available across those colleges and universities which already provide uh, BSL qualifications to ensure that we have that throughput uh, of interpreters required to support the work that we're doing. Similarly, in terms of budget, all of the actions which are contained within the plan uh, are, pl are actions which we are fully taking forward and are fully budgeted for within the work that the Scottish Government will be doing over the coming three years, which I've identified in relation to the actions. In terms of the question she asks about colleges and universities, each college and university will be required to produce their own BSL plan under the uh, guidance, of the, under the terms of the legislation. We'll be working closely with colleges and universities in relation to that. We'll also be looking very carefully at uh, the approach on widening access and the work that is highlighted uh, in the action plan uh, in relation to colleges and universities and improving the experience and access to universities will be taken forward uh, alongside that work, but also alongside the work for each college and university to produce their own BSL plan and for that to reflect the experience that BSL users should have when they attend university or college. Mark Griffin. Thank you, President Officer. I warmly welcome the publication of the strategy and the ambition shown within it. I'd like to thank the Minister for adv advancing the statement and the strategy and for the volume of work he and his officials have clearly put in to produce the strategy. I would also like to thank the BSL National Advisory Group for the work they've done on the strategy and everyone who responded to the consultation. But can I ask the Minister um, to say what steps the Government will take through the strategy to increase the number of much needed BSL interpreters, how it can ensure that BSL users will not have to rely on a family member to interpret sensitive information in a medical appointment, and if the government has given any consideration to how it, would, how it could support deaf BSL users who would like to participate in the Deaf Olympics. Minister. Um, so, first of all, can I put on record again my uh, Thanks to Mark Griffin, who obviously took this forward as a member's bill in Parliament and worked in a very collaborative nature with my colleague Alistair Allen and also the wider BSL community. I said in my speech that this was a, an example of uh, the kind of progressive approach we're taking in Scotland to social policy. I think it was also a fine example of the kind of cross-party approach that we can take on these issues uh, to achieve positive outcomes. In terms of the points Mark Griffin raises around interpreters, uh, I mentioned to Liz Smith that we would be taking forward work to increase uh, the number of interpreters out there. Over the next two years, we're going to sponsor uh, two new training programmes, one at Heriot Watt and one at Queen Margaret University, uh, designed to support BSL interpreters to work in the specialist fields of health, mental health and justice. So that perhaps addresses the second part of his question around increasing the availability of interpreters to work in the field of health, but also as well as that, the, the requirement for local plans rests with health boards as well. So health boards themselves will have to give consideration to the point Mark Griffin raises about ensuring that uh, it isn't just left to family members to undertake interpreting uh, for uh, BSL users within health appointments, whereas he rightly identifies there may be sensitive information that they do not wish family members to be present while they disclose. In terms of his third point around support, for participation in the Deaf Olympics. Uh, that's maybe a point I can take away and discuss with my colleague, the Minister for Sport, and see about how we can uh, perhaps encourage and promote participation in the Deaf Olympics. And I'll go get back to him in writing in relation to that. Thank you. Graham Deed to be followed by Michelle Ballantyne. Uh, thank you. In order to tackle the interpreter shortfall in the long term, in my view, we, we need to ensure that BSL interpreting is promoted as a career choice amongst young people. So I therefore welcome the new qualification noted in the Minister's statement. But sitting alongside this and perhaps considering the short to medium term, uh, can the Minister advise if steps might also be taken to restore pathways for deaf people to become tutors? 
Minister. Uh, yes, absolutely. And uh, not just in terms of tutors, but I think throughout the education system. And one of the things which we've committed to doing is, for example, exploring with the General Teaching Council for Scotland how we can remove some of the barriers that exist to deaf people uh, entering the teaching profession. Um, so as well as that, we will look at how we can remove those barriers where they exist to enable deaf people to uh, access the opportunities uh, which we believe they should be entitled to access. So I can give Graeme Day that commitment that that is a line of work which the government will be exploring. Michelle Ballantyne to be followed by Ian Gray. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. So I've just demoted you. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. Um, I too welcome the content and, and sentiment of today, today's statement. Um, but last year, the National Deaf Children's Society reported that 90% of child, deaf children have hearing parents with limited knowledge of deafness and are unlikely to be using any form of BSL. Can the Minister comment on how the Scottish Government will ensure that parents are given the resources to help their deaf children to ensure that they are able to get the best start in a family home setting? Minister. Yep, so I can point to uh, Action 10, for example, about improving access to earlier services for parents whose child is diagnosed as deaf or deafblind uh, by developing information about BSL and deaf culture for service providers who support parents, such as health visitors. Uh, Action 11, about assisting families of deaf and deafblind children, ensuring they have access to BSL resources as early as possible in their child's life. So that will include uh, consulting with BSL users and other stakeholders to assess the most appropriate platforms for signposting and disseminating information. Uh, and also uh, working, to, uh, working with partners to determine the best way of enabling families and carers to learn BSL so that they can communicate effectively with their deaf or deafblind child in the crucial early years. Now, I should point out that we're coming back in 2020 with further actions to develop towards 2023. So some of these are about determining the best vehicle for delivering the outcomes that we want to see. Where we've determined that, we will take that work forward either in advance of uh, reporting back to Parliament in 2020 or at the point at which we report back to Parliament and set out our further actions in relation to that. But there's a range of actions contained within this plan, which I think will address the very points that the National Deaf Children's Society and Michelle Ballantyne uh, have raised in relation to ensuring that that support is available for parents when they need it. Ian Gray to be followed by Christina McKelvey. Uh, thank you. Action 17 uh, of the strategy commits the government to undertake additional investigations into the level of BSL held by teachers and support staff working with deaf and deafblind pupils in schools. Can the Minister assure us that he intends this to be a precursor uh, towards moving to a minimum required level of BSL for such teachers? Minister. I think uh, in terms of what we heard in the consultation uh, about the variable nature of qualification uh, and level of BSL uh, in terms of both teachers but also communication support workers. What this is about is about us undertaking, I think, a, a more comprehensive analysis of what the actual picture is out there. But I do give the commitment to Ian Gray that I want to see uh, people being supported to the most appropriate level. And if that requires us to set a minimum standard, that is what the government uh, will do. Uh, what I want to ensure, however, as well, is that if we do establish a minimum standard, we, put, we are able to put in place the necessary support for those individuals who do not yet meet that minimum standard to then meet it, lest we end up in a position where we create a shortage as a result of lifting that. So that's what that work is about. It's about undertaking that analysis to find out what the general picture is, and then for us to consider how best can we support those individuals who are not maybe at the level we would like them to be at to get to that level so that they can benefit professionally and the people they are supporting can benefit as a result of that as well. Christina McKelvey to be followed by John Finney. Uh, thanks very much, President Officer. Like everyone else across the Chamber, I uh, greatly welcome this uh, national plan. The Minister will be aware of the work of the Equality and Human Rights Committee recently on the budget, where we looked at widening access to university for those who use BSL as their first language. One issue we discovered was the limited options for potential students to access suitable application process. Can the Minister tell us what the national plan will do to ensure that those who want to access higher and further education are able to do so within a contextualised application process? Minister. Uh, well, obviously there are uh, a, number of a number of actions in the action plan which relate 
to further and higher education and improving uh, access to and support within. I think in terms of the point around uh, applications processes, uh, these are obviously matters for the individual institutions themselves and may be better taken forward as part of their local plans, which obviously we will be working uh, to support them with, uh, both as a government but also through Scottish Funding Council as well. So uh, those are matters which I'm sure we will take forward with those individual institutions to ensure that the applications process is as open and accessible as it can be, as well as that being part of the wider considerations we have around our approach to widening access. John Finney to be followed by Richard Lockhead. Um, I thank the Minister for early sight of the statement and commend all the good work that's taken place. I want to return to an issue that's already been touched on, Minister, and that is the one of capacity and the implications. Young people quite often have to rely on family and friends for, for support. And there can be issues around confidentiality and indeed um, privacy, particularly with regard to medical appointments. What priority are you able to give that? I appreciate what you say about the government's role and health board's role, but clearly that's a key issue for young people. Yes. No, and I, I accept that entirely. And I think that's an area that we do need to look at very carefully in terms of the prioritisation uh, of the actions that we're taking forward. Uh, as I said, we have recognised that there are gaps in relation to uh, both the capacity of interpreting, but in specific areas uh, within uh, Scottish public life where there are not the level of interpreters that we would want to see to be able to support the kind of work which John Finney highlights. That's why we're sponsoring new training programmes. But before we get to the stage where people will be coming through those programmes, we need to look at how we address that in the here and now. And we will give that some careful consideration, but uh, I can't give him a firm commitment of of what would happen immediately but certainly we've set out the actions we've recognized the issue it has been raised uh, as part of the consultation that we've undertaken and we've put in place work to try and increase that capacity which would hopefully address the very point he raises richard lockhead followed by mike rumbles in warmly welcoming the minister's statement about the national plan can i support the point raised by graham day in relation to the desire expressed by many people of the deaf community in murray and elsewhere that tutors from the deaf community should be employed to teach BSL in local colleges. And given his reference to local plans, does he feel that that would be a good practice? And is that something that could be included in these local plans that he referred to? Yes, sir. I certainly think it is something that could be included in local plans. Obviously, I have to be very careful that it shouldn't be for me to dictate or determine what goes into the local plans. But the government will be seeking to support where... Uh, required the development of those local plans because we recognise that, uh, there is, that they will be being produced a year from now. Um, what we uh, want to do, as Richard Lockhead highlighted in Graham Day as well, is we want to ensure that uh, opportunities are available uh, for uh, BSL users. Uh, what we want to also ensure, however, and I think the point that Ian Gray made, is that people, uh, BSL users, or those t involved in the teaching of BSL, uh, reach uh, the required qualifications that we want to see um, but also uh, have access to the qualifications that would require them to take uh, or enable them to take up the posts that we want them to be able to take up. So across the whole of the action plan, there are uh, different actions in place which will remove some of those barriers. Um, but uh, the local plans also, I think, provide a vehicle for those barriers to be removed at that local level as well. Mike Rumbles to be followed by Marie Todd. The Liberal Democrats welcome and support the commitment from the Minister to ensure that more information will be made available in British Sign Language for treatment in the NHS. Can you be more specific, though, about the information that will be made available in BSL, specifically for those suffering or seeking advice on mental health grounds? Minister. Action 45 states um, that we will ensure that in line with Scotland's mental health strategy, BSL users should get the right help at the right time expect recovery uh, and fully enjoy their rights free from discrimination and stigma. It commits us by 2020 that NHS boards and integration authorities should take action so that psychological therapies can be offered on a fair and equal basis to BSL users, uh, develop information about mental health accessible for BSL users through NHS Inform, and the NHS 24 will explore how telemedicine initiatives like Breathing Space uh, can provide uh, counselling in BSL as an easy to access mental health support. So those are three of the specific measures which we highlight in relation to the plan to 2020. Uh, obviously, the, there will be a progress report in 2020 with further actions from there to 2023, um, but we will continue to look at what we can do to improve access to all uh, levels of support, whether that's in terms of mental health or general health and wellbeing for BSL users. Marie Todd to be followed by Annie Wells. Thank you, presiding officer. 
Um, I'd like to put on record that I really welcome that the BSL National Plan includes developing um, SQA awards in BSL and its long-term goals for BSL in Scotland. Dingwall Academy in my constituency are really keen that BSL becomes an accredited school qualification and has the same status as other languages, and I am too. To follow on from Mr Rumble's question, partly because of social isolation, BSL users are dis disproportionately affected by poor mental health. How will the plan address this? Minister. Uh, well, I look forward to visiting Dingwall Academy uh, next month, who Marie Todd has assiduously highlighted uh, at every opportunity in relation to BSL, uh, and I look forward to seeing the work that they're doing. I had the opportunity to see the work being done at Stonywood School in my own constituency, uh, and it was fantastic watching uh, in a primary four class children uh, acting as teachers to other children in relation to BSL, which I thought was quite inspirational. In terms of her point around uh, the issues of poor mental health, I think that as well as the access to support in relation to mental health, we also have to remember what the root causes are of those mental health problems, and Marie Todd highlights those. So the action plan as a whole, I think, should be viewed as a vehicle to improving mental health for BSL users on the basis that many of the barriers and challenges that they face are contributory factors to those issues around poor mental health, which Marie Todd highlights. And if the plan then tackles and addresses those barriers and challenges, as a consequence of that, we should hopefully then see improvement in relation to mental health for BSL users. Annie Wells to be followed by Fulton McGregor. Annie Wells. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I too warmly welcome the launch of the British Sign Language National Plan and applaud the effort that has been made in trying to improve the lives of deaf people in Scotland. I note that the BSL, I note that BSL as a language choice will be offered in schools. Can the Minister give details on how the Scottish Government will counter any issues that may arise from lack of qualified teaching staff, as well as the exact discussions taking place with the General Teaching Council for Scotland to progress matters? Minister. Uh, well, first of all, I don't think I could give a, a blow by blow account of the discussions that are being had, but we are committed to ensuring that uh, the barriers that exist to uh, deaf BSL users in particular, but BSL users more generally, uh, becoming uh, teachers uh, are addressed as part of our uh, challenge, uh, as part of our approach to widening the number of people who are able to access the teaching profession. So that will hopefully uh, go some way to addressing the point which Annie Wells highlights uh, of ensuring that where we uh, want to create a qualification an accredited qualification in BSL. Um, we will have the capacity in terms of teachers to be able to teach that. Uh, and also, uh, I think the creation of that uh, accredited qualification will also make it perhaps easier for people to gain access to uh, teaching routes as a result of the fact that they will be teaching a subject which will have an accredited qualification attached to it. But those are discussions that we'll continue to take forward with the Scottish Qualifications Authority and the General Teaching Council for Scotland. So while I can't give her a blow by blow account of those discussions, she can rest assured those discussions are ongoing. And when we have uh, more, ma more to update members on in relation to that, we will seek to do so. And Fulton McGregor. Thank you, President Officer. Like everyone else, I welcome uh, this announcement today, but I would also like to take this opportunity to put on record um, the praise of Holly Kinsella, a, a young woman from my constituency who campaigned uh, for this through the ND. CS Scotland um, Society and she, I did invite her to come along today but she couldn't make it because she's at university. Um, how will the plan address the unemployment and underemployment issues for BSL users and will the plan also help to tackle uh, those issues faced by, by those in employment? Minister. Uh, well, first of all, um, can I uh, commend Fulton McGregor for highlighting the, the work that Holly Kinsella uh, has done and I know that she was uh, taken to Parliament by uh, Mr McGregor as his local champion on the basis of the work that she has done in relation to raising awareness of and campaigning for improvements in relation to BSL. Uh, the plan sets out a wide range of actions in relation to employment and underemployment. Um, we will be looking to work with, for example, Skills Development Scotland, developing young workforce. We'll be looking at uh, awarding the highest level of modern apprenticeship funding for BSL users within their chosen framework and promoting foundation apprenticeships for school children who use BSL to try, try and address those issues that Fulton McGregor rightly highlights around uh, underemployment, unemployment and perhaps lack of access. 
but also what we want to ensure is that we uh, get the message out there to employers. Uh, so working alongside uh, others to raise awareness of things like, for example, access to work schemes, uh, which can help ensure that within the workforce, once access has been achieved within the workforce, there is that parity of esteem uh, that so often BSA, BSL users in the workforce perhaps don't feel they have achieved. Thank you. That concludes our debate. We'll now move on to the next item of business. And we'll just take a few moments for members to change seats.